um, uh, first uh, for uh, let me thank you uh, for the invitation uh, for the, uh, to this wonderful conference. This is my first time in India, actually. And uh, uh, before uh, my speech, I would like to uh, say Happy New Year of the Monkey because actually yesterday it was uh, Chinese New Year, so that's why uh, I uh, just arrived this morning. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, global cybersecurity environment. Uh, as a whole and also uh, the perspectives of the U.S. and China in uh, comparison. I would like to cover four aspects. First is about the concept and shaping of cybersecurity environment. And second about the reconstitution of uh, uh, security problems because of the uh, cyberspace. And the third is about the common features of a global cybersecurity environment. And fourth is the uh, difference of uh, perspectives of the U.S. and China. Um, on cybersecurity environment. And then uh, first about the concept and shaping of cybersecurity environment. I think that uh, uh, the security uh, first means that the, it's a state uh, to keep away from certain threats. And security not only, of course, uh, uh, in the cyber age, it does not uh, uh, only belong to a state, region, or certain social organization, but also refer to the living st uh, state of each group or individual who use the network or is greatly affected by the network technique all over the world. But of course, in international relations, we uh, uh, mainly maybe talk about the security, uh, cybersecurity um, for the states. Um, uh, so for, uh, uh, for most of us, the cybersecurity environment is related to the cybersecurity threat, uh, which uh, is perceived by a certain subject. And the concept of, uh, um, of course, security environment is still ambiguous, although it is very popular, I think. Um, uh, the security environment, which is understood in the field of international security study, mainly investigates the e external environment, uh, which does not uh, involve the uh, internal uh, domestic environment of a state. Um, uh, so generally, I think cybersecurity refers to at least two different images. Include uh, one is uh, which kind of security threats are confronted in the cyberspace, and the second is who is threatened by the cybersecurity and should be protected. And uh, I, um, I think uh, for uh, for the concept, I think first uh, cybersecurity environment scope could be large or small. Um, uh, if we see it as enlarged, it could cover the cybersecurity, uh, the concepts, uh, the cybersecurity strategies, the cybersecurity uh, structures, the cybersecurity institutions, as well as the interstate cybersecurity relations of all states. Uh, these can all be uh, seen as integral uh, parts c according to the early analysis. Um, uh, uh, but uh, um, uh, these are the, 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 the big one, the big field analysis, and then uh, mostly we think that from the threat uh, analysis. Um, uh, as uh, some scholars just also mentioned that the Martin, uh, Martin Lubicki, uh, he mentioned that the cyberspace has a three-layer model. One is the physical uh, layer, and the second is uh, uh, the grammar layer, mainly refers to the software and protocol which make the information to be transferred possible. And then further, the semantic layer um, refers to the information flow, uh, flowing in the cyberspace. And, uh, and, and then uh, uh, another t other two scholars also think that the uh, semantic um, layer could be further divided into uh, uh, the code and the value. So if we think, if we think all these three layers, if you cover all these three layers, the security environment could be very broad and could be extended to like value, belief, and thought. So uh, that's uh, uh, the uh, first uh, point. And the second point, I think that the uh, severity of threats in the uh, cybersecurity environment uh, is different. Uh, it could be uh, extend from the non-intentional accidents such as the software and system error uh, with the lowest severity to the cyber warfare, just uh, just like uh, Professor Austin mentioned. Um, uh, and in fact, uh, in the between, there are many, uh, these two extremes, there are many other forms, different forms, such as cyber crime, cyber spy, and cyber terrorism. Um, 
And in fact, the boundary between the different types of cybersecurity threat is very obscure. And the division of levels of cybersecurity threats is uh, also in question. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that the, although the cyber warfare is regarded as the most um, destructive violent activity form as far as the, but as far as the loss cost and the overall scale are concerned, um, it is not that severe as uh, the acts uh, such as the cyber crime and spy activities, uh, which are uh, much closer to the direct threats uh, to international uh, security. And uh, of course, there are many types of uh, uh, cyber threat, like uh, hacker uh, attacks, organizational cyber crime, cyber terrorism, and cyber warfare, etc. And third point of the con uh, about the concept and. Uh, of cybersecurity environment, I would like to mention is the cybersecurity environment is essentially a subjective state. Um, uh, because the cybersecurity environment, I think it, it reflects the cognitive difference for the cybersecurity of different subjects. Um, and there is actually uh, the spread of uh, cyber fear in this field. The cyber fear refers to the psychological panic of the general public for out of control of uh, fragility of the internet society, internet dependency and development of uh, uh, internet technology. Uh, so with this kind of cyber fear, on one hand, people tend to exaggerate uh, the cybersecurity risk and potential threats confronted and overestimate the social bearing capacity and capacity to uh, respond to the cybersecurity problems. On the other hand, people easily believe that the cyber threat uh, words uh, of uh, those politicians, media, and enterprises, rather than make rational judgment um, according to the objective fact and logic uh, inference. Um, of course, beside the cy uh, cyber uh, uh, fear, there's uh, uh, some the interest uh, group uh, 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 factor, also the power gains between the powerful states. So it means that the cybersecurity is uh, shapeful, uh, shapeable to a great extent. Um, and uh, the over-interpretation for the cybersecurity risk further strengthens the threat cognition, which results in the conflict and control-oriented security practice. And uh, it further creates a cybersecurity environment with uh, less mutual trust and weakening rules, uh, which kind of results in the prophecy, prophecy of uh, self-realization uh, tending to cyber conflicts. Um, uh, for example, as uh, 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 scholars uh, previously mentioned, that the people are used to use those terms, uh, such as uh, uh, cyber uh, virus, worm, cyber warfare, uh, cyber weapons of mass destruction, cyber pro harbor, 9-11, etc. Uh, and then uh, uh, the normal cybersecurity competition between different states is uh, exaggerated. Uh, to use cyber warfare, etc. Uh, so uh, this is also one point that I will make. And then the fourth point is the shaping of cybersecurity environment is related to discourse. Uh, this point is also related to the third one. Um, uh, uh, two scholars mentioned that the uh, uh, construction of the image uh, uh, can be divided into three types for cyberspace. The first is to Hyper-securitization, uh, 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 which is uh, cybersecurity discourses depend on the imaginary disaster scene to make the severity and urgency of the security image much higher than the real security threat. Um, uh, this focus, this stress the destructive consequences uh, which may be caused by the sudden, uh, sudden cybersecurity event, especially the failure of the core information system of such fields as uh, finance and military, etc., um, which might lead to collapse of the whole social and political order. And the second uh, way of the discourse construction is uh, uh, the everyday security practice, which connects the cybersecurity image and general experience of the audience with the daily knowledge, making the danger scene close at hand. Uh, for example, virus, uh, infection, and loophole, etc. these words, to make you feel uh, very close at hand. And then third is the technification, uh, which in which uh, the uh, authoritative discourses about the cybersecurity pro problems are 
uh, granted to the technological experts of cybersecurity. And then um, I think the uh, reconstitution, the second part of my presentation is uh, the con reconstitution of uh, security problems in the network environment. Uh, also, I uh, uh, summarize four aspects. The first is that the uh, of course, uh, very easily seen is that all behavioral subjects in the network environment, uh, environment have capacity to launch attacks, as uh, many uh, uh, previous scholars have mentioned. Uh, and this is also the most important mm -hmm. characteristic of the cybersecurity, uh, about the diversification of behavioral uh, subjects, uh, as uh, you know, not only government, but also non-government organization or uh, 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 the criminals or terrorists all have the capacity to launch attacks, and, uh, and this is for then. Then the second one is uh, um, in the cyber uh, space environment. Cyber uh, environment, uh, there's no geographic concept, so uh, it is not the security problem is not limited by the launch capacity. Um, so, uh, in the traditional security analysis. Uh, the distance projection, the power projection uh, uh, with distance will increase uh, the cost. And uh, with the increase of the launch distance, the, the, uh, the cost will be increased. Uh, meanwhile, the efficiency will uh, show a decline trend. But uh, in cyberspace, this uh, changed completely uh, as there's no geographic concept in the network ro road. And uh, the capacity uh, may be launched in any place and at any time in the network world. The third point is that the threat to the network environment cannot be attributed quickly and effectively, um, uh, which means that cannot be explained easily. Um, uh, failure of the attribution uh, for the behavior of, uh, um, uh, uh, will result in misjudgment. And uh, there are several reasons. First of all, is that the technical factor is the primary reason for the difficulty of making uh, the effective attribution in the cyberspace. Uh, th as uh, technology changes quickly, the uh, attacking uh, technology will change accordingly. And the secondly, because of the numerous behavioral subjects in the cyberspace, as I mentioned. And then uh, um, it is difficult to define and distinguish them uh, through the characteristic of the, uh, the behaviors. Uh, in the traditional secu security, um, uh, we could distinguish the combat personnel and non-combat personnel, but in uh, cyberspace, it is uh, very difficult to uh, distinguish uh, combat and non-combat uh, uh, personnel. And then, uh, uh, in the cyberspace environment, it uh, it is also easy to make force flag, um, uh, because uh, as uh, technological logic is concerned, any computer can be attacked and can be used as an attack uh, platform. So um, uh, the cybersecurity defender often does not know uh, where the threats are from, who launches the attack, and who will be in charge of such attack behavior easily. So even when the state or terrorist or uh, any individual declares to be responsible for such t network um, attack, uh, we have uh, reasons to uh, doubt that uh, if they are telling the truth. And also, the fourth <coughs> one is the failure of effective deterrence in the uh, network environment. Um, the deterrence uh, in traditional security theory can be uh, divided into two uh, kinds. One is the deterrence about, uh, by punishment, and the, the other is deterrence by denial. Uh, by punishment means that uh, um, re uh, to revenge the attacker in a manner of punishment, and to force it to realize that uh, um, attack is unworthy, um, uh, but uh, in a cyber space, cyber uh, environment, it is uh, uh, is uh, is very hard to do so. Um, as um, uh, as the second striking capacity cannot be ensured, and the application of a deterrence by punishment uh, to the cybersecurity field has lots of problems, and then uh, the other is uh, deterrence by denial. Uh, also has uh, limitations because the counterpart will not be deterred if they think that the costs of network attack are low. Uh, so, so the deterrence is uh, very hard to apply. 
And the uh, third aspect is about my presentation is the common as, uh, characteristics of uh, global cybersecurity environment. Um, I also summarize four uh, features. Uh, the first is the hysteretic uh, nature of security technique. Uh, compared with the methods of cyber attack, development of cyber security te technique has the hysteric uh, nature. The better the security techniques and products, the higher the attack uh, techniques as, uh, and methods. And then, um, uh, so cybersecurity is only a, a relative uh, uh, security instead of uh, absolute uh, security. And then um, the second is the imbalance of strength uh, structure or power structure, uh, as uh, there is a big difference between um, different between and among uh, different countries concerning those uh, uh, strengths, as uh, uh, Professor Aust uh, Austin also mentioned, that uh, uh, how many uh, how many countries have developed uh, milita uh, cyber military uh, troops, etc. So there's a balance, and also uh, because of the uh, you know the uh, technological um, uh, development uh, imbalance as well. Uh, and the, like the prison uh, scandal uh, of the U.S. government uh, uh, also proves that such imbalance of the cyberspace uh, power structure. And then the third is about the deficiency of uh, institutional norm and uh, collective uh, security mechanism. Um, uh, we have some, uh, for example, the Cyber Crime Convention, but uh, um, uh, for this one, uh, the judicial function is very limited, and also the range of members are uh, very uh, limited and not so popularized. So, which uh, make it not sufficient to respond to the global cybersecurity problems, and also, yeah, and uh, of course, we uh, uh, the fourth point is the insufficient mutual trust. Uh, between different countries, for example, between U.S. and China, we have uh, uh, we have the lowest strategic trust, and then among uh, compared with the other fields such as economics and politics and military, uh, the level of uh, strategic mutual trust in terms of uh, cyberspace uh, is uh, the uh, lowest in different fields. And then uh, between U.S. and China, my last uh, part is uh, the difference between uh, U.S. and China about cybersecurity environment. And there are the for the cybersecurity environment, there are some uh, different analysis ways. But uh, uh, I uh, I like the threat-based uh, uh, way of method. Uh, and then uh, uh, for U.S. and China, we have a different uh, understanding of our core national interest in cyberspace. I summarized uh, for the U.S. maybe the first uh, the uh, the most important three aspects of. Uh, uh, its uh, core cybersecurity interests first uh, the security of the key infrastructure and the second is the uh, free actions in the cyberspace uh, the third is the security of the commercial and uh, technical secrets so based on this core national interest in cyberspace the US takes the preemptive cybersecurity strategy uh, and as the uh, US you know um, uh, there are many uh, several number ones for the US to show its preemptive uh, characteristics in terms of cybersecurity strategy. For example, the US is the first country to propose to, uh, to uh, take the cyberspace as a battlefield. It is the first um, country to establish the cyber uh, army and cyber command. It is the first country to carry out the real cyber war practice. And for China, I also summarize the uh, f three uh, most important core national uh, in, uh, cybersecurity interest first is the social and political stability, which really makes the uh, biggest difference uh, between U.S. and China. Uh, so, as China is in a trans transitional phase to uh, industrialize society, uh, it uh, puts the social and political s stability as the first and the foremost most uh, national interest, and that's why uh, China uh, applies the. Uh, censorship um, in this field. And then uh, the second is uh, the security of the information infrastructure and net network system. So that's why in recent two years we have two buzzwords in China regarding China's uh, uh, information infrastructure. One is the network security <laughs> review um, uh, and the other is independently controllability. 
uh, which stressed that uh, China needs to develop its own domestic networking uh, industries. Uh, and then the third, of course, is uh, the security of network information and data. Uh, I'm not going to you know, expand it. And of course, US and China have some uh, uh, common uh, interests, such as in terms of safeguarding security of cyber infrastructure, maintaining the connection of the internet, uh, internet and also um, countering the ter uh, cyber terrorism and cyber crime. So uh, that's why when President Xi visited the US, we, uh, US and China, uh, reaches uh, some agreement on cybersecurity in last uh, September. Uh, so that's uh, the four parts of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.